Hello friends, I am Surreal Emil and welcome to a brand new Let's Play here on my channel. This is a Forza Motorsport 2 for the Xbox 360. Now, people who've been on the channel for a while may remember that I did a Forza 2 Let's Play in... I started in August 2015, I think, but I wasn't really happy with the way it was going, so I ended up deleting that off the channel. However, I decided to come back to Forza Motorsport 2 and retry the Let's Play. So, I'm going to be playing through the career mode. The arcade mode, I may play through that on my second channel. Uh, indeed, I actually did do a bit of it on my second channel, so feel free to check that out if you want. However, for the purposes of the Let's Play, I'm just going to be diving into the career mode. So, when we start the career mode, the first thing we get is the option to select a region. So, as you can see, home region determines the availability and cost of the cars in your career. Home region does not affect which tracks are available. So, our choices of regions are Europe, which we should select the European region if we like European sports cars, which I do. The North American region. Select the North American region if you like American muscle cars. I, I'm, I quite like my muscle cars. And select the Asian region if you like Asian tuna cars. I do that as well. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go through all the start cars that you have the choice of. And there's quite a few. So we have the Volkswagen Golf GTI Mark II. The 2003 Mini Cooper S. 2007 Peugeot 207. 2002 Saab 93 Aero. 1995 Volkswagen Crado. 2004 Audi TT and the 2006 Volkswagen Golf GTI. If you decide to go with North America, you have the Scion TC, the Ford Focus SVT, the Pontiac Solstice, the 2003 Lexus IS 300, the Acura RSX, the Chrysler Talon, and the Chevrolet Cobalt SS Coupe. And finally, if we go with Asia, we have the Ludo Special, a 1994 Honda Civic, a Hyundai Tuscany, a Honda CRX, a Nissan Silvia, a Mazda Savannah, a Toyota MRS, and a Toyota Supra. Now, I think for the purposes of my Let's Play, I'm going to start out in Europe. Now, bear in mind, we can change regions if and when we need to. However, I think I'm going to start in Europe, and I think for my first car, I'm going to go with the 2006 Volkswagen Golf GTI, because it has the best specs of all the cars here. It's the highest PI. Uh, so let's go ahead and select it. Do Asia, sorry. Um, I, uh, hi, Jeff. Um, okay, sure. It's time for dad. And I do indeed have a dad's car. So anyways, as you can see in the main menu, we have an option to go race. We can look through my cars. We can buy some cars. We can buy some upgrades. We can tune the cars. We can paint the cars. And we can set difficulty. So let's go ahead and and set some difficulty options. So I basically selected the highest level because it turns everything off, which is the way I like to drive Forza. I'm going to put the AI on medium for now, but if they're a bit too easy, then we can turn them up and so on and so forth. Anyways, let's go ahead and race. And the first place we can race is the Proving Grounds. Now, as you can see, the races are split up into seven different categories. We have Proving Grounds, Amateur Cup, Manufacturer Cup, Semi-Pro, Rivalry Face-Off, Regional Championships, Factory Spec Races, Professional Series, and the Endurance Races. And as you can see, you need to be a certain level to unlock most of the categories. So, I guess we have to start on the Proving Grounds. And because we've got a European car, the only one we can... Or the only race we can do at the moment is the European Open. So, let's go ahead and do this. Celebration of European motoring. All European cars are welcome. We get a 1970 914-6 Porsche if we win. And there's three races, so let's get into them. Our first race will be heading to the Test Track Infield at Copperhead. So these are all made up tracks by the game on the Proving Grounds um, bed, essentially. And the tracks do get quite complicated as they go on, but these first few tracks are relatively simple. Because they're made up, they can be a little bit tricky to learn because obviously you're not particularly used to the driving around the tracks unless, of course, you've played this game for a long time. Uh, so, yeah. But they aren't particularly complicated to start with, so we shouldn't have too many problems at the start. So anyways, as you can see, um, apparently the Audi TT is very, very slow off the line. Our Golf got a hell of a launch. Now, one of the things in this game is that the highest PI vehicle will start on pole position, which I do think is a little bit strange. Like, I would prefer to see it be the lowest PI vehicle uh, start on pole position. That would make the most sense, at least to me. Uh, but there you go, if you're in the highest PI car, you do start out on the front, so of course, it's going to be 
a bit of an advantage, or more of an advantage than it would be in, say, pre um, in the later Forza games, to actually start out in a car with a lot of PI as I go wide there, which isn't a particularly good... It's time for that. Yes, regular car reviews. Uh, I can't even remember what episode that was. The uh, Oh, it was the Eagle Fighter of the Regal. Chrysler, oh, sorry, Eagle Talon Freedom. Anyways, um, it's that time again. It's time for that. Anyways, I, I love RCR. They're great. <clears throat> Anyways, as you can see, this is a pretty simple two-lap race, and we are in the lead. So, yeah, again, this isn't a particularly tricky track, as you can probably tell, but it is a pretty fun one, actually. I can imagine it's kind of fun to go ahead and hot lap around this track in a purpose-built race car. The Golf GCI may be a very, very good car, and indeed it's pretty good for a start car. It's not exactly a purpose-built race car, though. Uh, the, it's a pretty decent handling vehicle, though. The one thing I will say for Forza 2 is the handling on this game is extremely smooth. It's very, very nice to drive in this game. Admittedly, I do think these earlier Forzas had way too much grip in the cars. However, they did do a good job of telling you sort of what's going on. They did a great job of telling you about the feedback of the vehicle. And that's something in the later Gran Turismo uh, games with a sort of controller. They didn't really give you too much feedback. Well, as in these games, they certainly did. Anyways, for winning our first race, we get 1,420 credits. And we get a European car discount, so 5% discount on production cars in a European dealership. Put a spoiler on it. Um, I don't think... Right, here's my plan. I'm going to try and use a different car for each race, but I assure you we will find a car and put a spoiler on it at some point tonight. Probably a silly one. Believe me, the Golf GTI as well. I like the Mark V Golf GTI. Maybe when we get to the Mark IV R32, I'm going to put a big gaping spoiler on that because... Uh, but still. Anyways, we move on to the next track. I didn't really see what this one was called. However, this one is even simpler than the last track. This one is, I believe, where you do your first time trial in the arcade mode. So, pretty simple track, this. Uh, relatively low speed track. Gotta try and get around this Golf GCI. The one thing, because race car. Yes, indeed, because race car. Um, right. Break into here. Go round, go round. There we go. Pull around there. Pretty good. This is the one thing I will say for this track is I really like this track. However, this oh, right here does end up confusing. If you don't break for there, you will fly straight off into the sand trap. And I do have to admit, the first few times I went around this track, that really threw, threw me off. Apparently, I didn't get a penalty for doing that. So, one thing you may notice is if you go off the track, you will actually get a time penalty, which is the way they used to deal with penalties back when it came to this game. Honestly, I actually think it's a decent enough system. I kind of prefer it over the whole dirty lap thing. I've never really been a fan of the whole dirty lap thing, because especially in Forza, where it indicates a dirty lap, it can be very, very strange, i.e. around Top Gear if you go over a curb a little bit too badly. Uh, you will get a dirty lap, which isn't particularly good. Uh, but there you go. Anyways, ooh, I'll just stay a little bit wide there, but we are completely fine. Admittedly, I am completely destroying the AI right now. Believe me, though, the AI will get a lot quicker as this game goes on. Of course, in these first few races, though, they are relatively tame. Oh, hey, we have six people in stream. Hello. Um... I'm driving your dad's car. Uh, oh, please, no, not that. <laughs> That's not my name, goddammit. If it was pronounced like... I mean... I, it didn't even look like it would be pronounced like that. That's the worst thing. Anyways, we get to level 3. Ooh, so we get a 10% discount on production cars from Europe and a 15% production cars on... 15 on production cars, what? Another 15% off European production cars for a total of 15%. Anyways, we can now race in the Amateur Cup races, and let's go on to the final race of today, which heads to another one of the Proving Ground circuits. Of course, as you'd expect, in the Proving Grounds. Anyways, uh, attempt to set the fastest single lap time, but why? Anyways, uh, big Vodafone banner there, of course. I 
Oh, is that two kind of curious? I wonder if they switch them around in America, because I don't think Vodafone exists in America. Interesting. Anyways, I think it's Verizon out there or something. Anyways, as I've said before, the one thing I don't like about the Proving Grounds tracks is the fact that they are extremely narrow, so trying to get an overtake on cars it can be a little bit of hard work. Got to try and get around M. Rossi in that GTI Golf of his. I can probably... Right, if I put my car on the outside, I can have the inside for this particular corner. Oop, he's going to try to do some rubbing with me. And admittedly, it didn't damage my car, so that's fine. Uh, oh god, I remember this track now. It has these really weird... I don't know what these are. They're like Z-Bends, I guess. They are a little bit strange. Don't really know why they're there, but there you go. Anyways, uh, again, it's another Proving Grounds track, so the lap times are pretty darn quick. We have about 49 seconds on our first lap, and to be honest with you, it wasn't even that clean a lap. I went a bit wide in certain places. And messed a few things up here and there. Speaking of messing things up, ran a little bit wide there. Once again, though, we are basically way past the AI, so that's completely fine. There we go through there. Alright, let's go back through these strange bends again. Admittedly, they're not too bad in these sort of early hot hatches. Once you start getting up to the sports cars, though, that's when they can get a little bit strange. VTEC. Golf GTIs don't have VTEC, they have GTI stuff. I don't know, that red lipstick adds 10 horsepower. Oh, it was only a two lap race, never mind. Anyways, I'm assuming we are going to be getting to level four, indeed we are. We get a 20% discount on production cars in Europe. Okay, well apparently they're going to keep discounting production cars for us, which is perfectly fine by me. Anyways, we finished first in the European Open, so we've been awarded a 1970 Porsche 914-6, and we get 1,500 credits as a bonus. Okay, cool. And there you go. There's our new shiny air-cooled um, Volkswagen Porsche thing. How much power does this thing have? Oh, it's not going to tell me. Anyways, there we go. That is the end of the European Open, and indeed, that's the end of the first episode. In the next episode, we're going to be doing the front-wheel drive shootouts, so join me for that. Anyways, friends, I hope you've enjoyed watching. My name has been The Real Emil, and until next time, farewell.